what a way to say that women are viewed differently on this campus. They are viewed for their accomplishments. They are viewed for their contributions to this campus, not their physical presentation. The criteria are to identify why this person qualifies as a woman of distinction. What have they contributed to the campus, to the community at large? And we keep it fairly broad-based, but we are looking for women whose contributions have mattered both locally and possibly globally. I'm president of American Humanics, which is the uh, national nonprofit which prepares people to work in the nonprofit sector. So we educate nonprofit leaders, and we're an association and an alliance of 65 universities across the nation. And I created the Office of Aging and Long Term Care because of my uh, passion for social policy, especially at the state level and for improving conditions for older adults uh, in Kansas, people with long-term care needs. And what I really am uh, passionate about is helping them uh, stay in the community. I've taught for 30, this is my 36th year of teaching, and I'm still in touch with people all the way back and from the very beginning, which is wonderful. I, and I have now children, <laughs> the people I taught, and um, families. Uh, one of the most rewarding things here at KU is getting siblings. Her name is Lenore Ekdahl, and she was um, the first food service director here on campus. And actually, Mrs. E's, um, our largest dining operation, is named after her. The, the official name is Ekdahl Dining Commons, but we always called her Mrs. E for short, and that's why the facility is called Mrs. E's. Um, she, I learned a lot more about her after she retired than when I actually. Uh, worked for her and, and she was just an inspiration to so many people and she um, did so many things outside of, of her career um, that just inspired people and, and helped them uh, become better themselves. Mary Clater has been a really big uh, part of my life here at KU. She's one of the first teachers I had freshman year and She's also uh, my advisor uh, through the honors program, and so she's been a really big help just figuring out like what kinds of activities would, would be best suited for what I want to do. Um, I, I hope to go into environmental policy and, and deal with environmental issues, uh, especially considering like food production and energy. And so, you know, she really helped me find uh, good people in the environmental studies department to talk to. And my mother was the first woman to go to school in my village in Africa and she faced um, huge challenges as the only girl. You know, at the time, girls used to just get married when they were so small. She died when I was, three when I was four months pregnant with my first child. So when, I, when my husband left me, she was already dead. But I would look back and I, and I would think, if she could face those challenges at the time, and she didn't give up. And then I met Grandma Joy, and I found um, she, she is a very peaceful person. When I met her, I was so troubled in my everything. But the, she had this reassurance that she kept, you know, reassuring me it was going to be okay. I, we immigrated from Germany um, when I was really young. And my mom was a very strong person because she came over not speaking any English. Um, in fact, my whole family came over not speaking any English from Germany and she had to make her own way in the United States as you know by reading you know trying to figure out what the grocery store was like and things and she also was um, handicapped um, she had handicapped she has a handicapped hand and she never let that deter her from what she wanted to do and she was always able to accomplish things and she became she's a florist and um, and became one of the top people in her trade and, and did amazing things, but she never let that handicap deter her from what she was doing. The people in my life that have been mentors have been kind of my uh, grandmothers and the women um, in my family, I guess, because they've always given me support and helped me throughout my academic career, but also um, elders that have given us, um, I guess, just information that I have 
found out through different interviews with different tribes. My family has been incredibly supportive of me always, as have my friends. Um, I've also had the fortune of working with Kathy Rose Mockery, who's the director of the Women's Resource Center, and she has been an incredible mentor to me and helped me to find a good balance between work and school and extracurriculars. I think it's portraying women in calendars and, you know, a really positive light, you know, showing what they can do and not just what they look like in a bathing suit. So, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a really positive thing and, I mean, I'm a big fan of it. Even since being fre a freshman in the dorms, I've always noticed the calendars because Emily, um, the Women's Resource Center, the Emily Taylor's Women's Resource Center has been great about putting the calendars up everywhere around campus and really promoting the program. And I think it's just great to see them around because it gives so many students just an idea of what's possible on campus and then the people that are around them that are doing really great things. I think it's really important that we recognize women just because of all the contributions that they bring and I think it's really awesome that we're able to do this.